He's just preparing now. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Roman Polnar, and on behalf of Hebrew Free Loans Business Circle, I'm delighted to welcome you to Food for Thought, which is a series of monthly conversations with experts in our communities who have offered to share their knowledge and insights with us. And today we'll talk about building a personal brand and reputation that makes people want to talk about you, talk about your business, and seek out your expertise. So think about this. What do people say about you when you're not in the room? Do they speak about you in glowing terms, or is it possible that they barely know you and don't have much to say? So today I've got the pleasure in having this conversation with Roberta Geis, creator of Rock Your Reputation and founder of Geis Marketing and PR. So if you're a business owner, an executive, or a professional who wants to shape your brand and grow your influence, stay locked in right here because that's exactly what Roberta will be sharing with us today. But first, I want to thank the Hebrew Free Loan of San Francisco for supporting our Northern California Jewish community for over 124 years. And this series is another way to offer resources and support. Each person that we're speaking with is a business owner with real world life experience, and they volunteered to share their insights that may help you navigate whatever you're facing in your own life or business. And for those of you joining us live, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Roberta Guys. Roberta, welcome. Thank you very much, Roman. So welcome to the show. And I know that we have a lot of questions ahead of us, but I do want to start with asking you to tell us a little bit more about what is a personal brand? We hear this term thrown around a lot these days. So how do you define it? What is it? Well, you might hear people say, you really need a personal brand. You've got to put your thought leadership out there, get yourself on LinkedIn and do some posts, write some podcast, write mm -hmm. some blog posts, get on podcasts. All of that is correct. It is absolutely part of your personal brand. And your personal brand is so much more. The way I define it is personal brand is the sum total of how you want to be perceived and how we actually perceive you. And as we go through the, the Q&A uh, today, you're going to see that really what we want is that in those intentional things about your personal brand, which I'll be getting into in a moment, and the way people perceive you, you want those things to be as closely aligned as possible. Now, to set your personal brand apart, you have to have an underlying purpose. And this is where I depart from other people, really depart from other people who talk about personal branding. And your purpose isn't what makes you more money, that you want to make more money or you want to have more work-life balance. It's how you make a difference in the lives of others. So yes, you're developing yourself and you're going to do that with obsessive focus, but your real true focus is going to be on making others better off. And I just want to take a, a moment here to talk about purpose because again, what is personal brand? I'm giving it to you straight the way what it really means for me and what I advise on it. So think about Greta Thunberg. Think about hmm. the late, great, great, late John Lewis and Malala Yafsai. Each of these individuals, Greta on climate change, John Lewis on rights for blacks, people of color, civil rights, and Malala trying to get an education for girls. They have an obsessive focus on their particular purpose. Now they're doing this on a huge global scale. And I'm not intending for you to think about doing something on a global scale. I bring those as examples for how you can really focus on your purpose in a pretty obsessive way down in your lane, in your area, in the place that you operate, the way you do business or where you function in society, whatever it is that you're doing, think about doing it with absolute purpose. And then you'll have what I like to call a purpose-driven personal brand. So as you were talking about some of the examples of people that have a personal brand that's very well articulated, they are putting themselves forward for the benefit of others. When I hear that, to me, that always also almost kind of 
parallels with our reputation is how people know about us. So is there a distinction between a personal brand and a reputation or are they really um, one and the same? No. Yeah. Well, they can become one of the same, but they are actually completely different. And here's mm. how your personal brand, you control 100%. Okay. You get intentional about your personal brand and it is how you show up. How, we, how you show up online in these virtual meetings and now pretty soon, what happens when you walk through the door of a room? Do you command attention? How are you dressed? When you speak, what do you say? How do you say it? Do you say it in a way that conveys authority? And of course, we're talking about here that if you want a personal brand and you'd like to be known as the leading authority in your field, you do want to come across with authority. Hmm. And then your personal brand is also all of the, what I sometimes called artifacts that you put out, which is articles that get published or you post onto your blog where you, you put videos, videos such as this and videos for your business, all of the messaging that you put out about your business, all of that you control 100%. Your reputation, mm -mm -mm. you have zero control over your reputation. Because as Roman said in the beginning, what are people saying about you when you're not in the room? You mm. cannot control that. But that is your reputation or part of your reputation. So as I said earlier, what we want to do is have that intentional side of you that you purposefully intentionally go out to develop your personal brand, get that as, as closely aligned as possible to what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. Sounds like the, the personal brand is the building block or building blocks of one's reputation. Uh, it really is. Yes. Mm. That intentional piece of it. So how do we know? And is it important to know what is our reputation? And um, how do we improve it? How do we make it? How do we more intentional about building the reputation that we want, both as individuals, as business leaders, as professionals? So let me just say right off the bat that I'm not going to be talking here about repairing a reputation if something's gone south mm -hmm. and there needs to be some repair that's a whole different issue what i'm talking about here is building a reputation either from scratch or what or building on what what you've already got i like to look at reputation from two different standpoints it's your online reputation because the fact is now that we are online and even when we're not virtual you know post covid everything pretty much that we do is online or mm -hmm. it ends up online. And then there's the interpersonal side of, of our reputation. So let's talk about the online reputation audit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do this now, but you can if you want. The first thing that people are going to do when they meet you, or when they're interested in you, what are they going to do? They're going to put your first name, your last name into Google, into the search bar and see what shows up. And whatever shows up for, for them, or whatever shows up for you when you do that, put your first name, last name into the, the search bar, that's what everybody's going to see about you. So take a look when you do this exercise, I call it again, call it the rapid reputation, online reputation audit. See what's showing up. LinkedIn very often is very high. Your website, if you have one, is also probably going to trend pretty high. But then anything else that you've been doing, whether it's being on video, or posting articles or mm -hmm. other activities are going to show up or not. Nothing may show up. You may discover that you don't even show up on the first page. And let's just rub a little more salt into that wound. You may discover there are other people with your name, more than one person, and they show up before you do. Mm -hmm. Ouch. So what do you do? You have to, again, remember we talked about intention, being intentional you have to make the intention to start publishing or doing act activities that are going to be load uploaded onto the internet. And those eventually will start tracking, but especially the ones that you control, such as I keep repeating this, is the article writing, the posting and posting to LinkedIn, those kinds of things, tweeting, those kinds of things are all going to, to show up on that first page. And why do I keep mentioning the first page? because very few people go beyond the first page. So you really want the best of you to surface on that first page. Now, 
interpersonal audit, in the interpersonal audit, on the other hand, now you go to people to find out what they think, not a popularity quent, uh, contest. Go to two or three people who know you really well and go to two or three people who barely know you at all and ask them, what do they know about what you do? Also ask them, what do you know about my purpose? Now it's very pop possible that you've not developed your purpose yet, but you might be surprised that some people may have already dis developed a purpose for you. Remember we talked about reputation, that people have a, per a perception of you. So sometimes people will already have understood from having contact with you that you stand for something, even though you may not have intentionally articulated it. So you're going to be really nicely surprised when you ask people, what do they know about you? And also you could ask them for a few words that they would use to describe you. And what you're going to do with that is it'll become part of your messaging as you start to de develop or refine the messaging that you've already got. The other part of the interpersonal audit is to take a look inside of you. And there are a few things that you can do, but the most basic one really is to look at any limiting beliefs. And the limiting beliefs are those things that can essentially hold you back and stop you from, from taking any action. So when, once, you've, once you've identified them, that awareness is already putting you well on the, the road to being able to be more public and more visible and feel more comfortable doing all these things that, that we're talking about here today. Hmm. So I wanna take a couple of steps uh, back because you talked about how we show up and doing this audit and given that how much of our lives is really online today and there's almost a blurring of the lines between our personal lives and our professional lives and of course we can all look to see where we stand where our personal brand is but given that most of our audience are likely uh, folks in the professional community in the business community and they're looking to enhance or clarify or solidify their personal brand and their reputation as leading authorities in their field, what advice or what actionable steps would you recommend we take so that we can better develop or reinvent or solidify that personal brand? And when I say personal, I mean both personal slash professional brand. Right. And I, in some circles, I call it executive branding as well. So mm -hmm. it, but really, we say personal brand to differentiate it, let's say from a company or a corporate brand, mm. where that's the entity that's being branded versus the personal or the executive or professional that's about us, the, mm -hmm. the individuals. Well, let me dovetail back on from that, the limiting beliefs, because before I get into seven steps that I'm going to suggest here, we're gonna start by you know this intentionality that we've been talking about, to, to control your personal brand. I'm going to talk a little bit here about mindset. And there are some wonderful lessons we can learn from Carol Dweck, who wrote a book called Mindset. Let me give you an example. It has nothing to do with work. I swim in the freezing cold waters of San Francisco Bay. Now, before you get all impressed about that, I'm a very slow swimmer. I shiver my butt off in the water, outside of the water. And if you could feel me right now, my hands are even cold. I was not cut out to do this stuff, but I fell into it. it, I, it I developed a passion for it. So very slow, very slow compared to the other swimmers. And I do it. What it requires is a how do I do that mindset? mindset? How can I get in this cold? and not just stand there and drive myself crazy and say, I'm gonna be so cold and then what's gonna happen when I get out? And let me tell you that we have swim clubs here at two swim clubs in San Francisco where after a cold swim, you get into the hot shower and the hot sauna before COVID. During COVID, those clubs were closed. So anybody who knows San Francisco and Aquatic Park, there's a set of bleachers that look down over Aquatic Park. That's where we get ourselves dry with those westerly winds blowing against us as we're trying to get warm and warmer. Those westerly winds are coming and, and making us cold again. So the point here is 
it's taken mindset just to get through this last year to get in the bay three, four times a week and do it. So let me go now to Carol Dweck. Just keep that positive mindset in mind as we go through the, a few points of advice from Carol. She has two mindsets. The first is the fixed one, the fixed mindset. So the way she says it, oh, I can't do that. So you might be saying to yourself, or as I'm talking here, I couldn't be doing that. I, there's no way. Perhaps swimming in the bay, oh, I couldn't do that. And that, that is a fixed mindset. And the more we say those kinds of things to ourselves, the more you believe that you can't change something. But a fixed mindset set something is a fixed mindset is something you believe you can't change. Flip that around and think about a growth mindset. What does Dweck say? The I can't do that becomes, hmm, how can I do that? How can I throw my body in those freezing waters of the bay and live to tell the story, which I am doing here. Of course, it becomes a conversation piece. That's sort of an extreme, but I think you get the point. When we're talking about personal branding, there are so many things where that little monkey on our back says, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't, you, you can't do that. No, I'm, I, I've got too much to do today. I'll just, maybe I'll deal with it tomorrow. And so we get on with what we're doing today and we keep pushing those things that make us uncomfortable. We push them aside. But when it comes to personal branding, if you start to adopt the mindset of how can I do that? When could I do that? What are the possibilities here? Who should, who, who should I be sending this out to? All kinds of wonderful things will open up in your mind. The possibilities will present themselves to you. And you'll suddenly you'll discover yourself like you've walked into a different room that's colored differently, a whole, just a whole different universe. So keeping growth mindset in mind, let's now go through the seven steps. We still okay on time, Roman? We're, we're good on time. And since we took a pause, I want to command you on swimming in the bay. As an ex-bay swimmer, I know that feeling. So bravo. Wait a minute. Ex-bay <laughs> swimmer? Well, What's you know, since we moved outside of San Francisco, it's no longer as convenient. We used to live three blocks from Aquatic Park. So that was my uh, usual swimming pool as well. Well, but I swim in a wetsuit, so we won't go into that. I don't, I don't know if you do. No. Nope. All right. See, even more of the applause. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I put on a little thermal top when it gets down to about 52 degrees because right. it, it hurts. It, it hurts. Oh, I forgot to tell you. When it gets really cold, it hurts and the water feels like it's biting. And you just have to say, oh, be very curious. Oh, look, the water's biting, isn't it? <laughs> There's that growth and mindset. It's a growth mindset. And again, you have it, it becomes mental when it gets really cold. It really is a mental exercise. All right. So here we go with the seven, seven steps. steps, seven steps to developing your personal brand and hence your reputation as an authority in your field. Really focus on your personal brand purpose. So remember, it's not about you. It's not about making more money or getting a work life balance. It's about making a difference in the lives of others. It's about knowing that you are a messenger who is on this planet to deliver ideas, messages, services, so that others are better off. And from whatever you're doing right now, you can extract that purpose. Or there may be something you say, you know what? I don't wanna do what I'm doing now. I really, in my heart, I want to be doing this other thing. And perhaps you transi transition into that. All of that's perfectly okay. Just know that whatever you're doing now, you have got a, you've got a purpose. If you've not identified it yet, you do have a purpose hidden within that. Step number two is identifying what you want to be known for professionally through your expertise plus your purpose. Mm -hmm. So many of you here today, I'm quite sure or watching this later on, have been in situations where we call it our elevator pitch and we're always told, you know, don't talk so much about yourself, but talk about the outcomes that we bring for people. And that's absolutely correct. And take it one step further, because what you want to be known for is that transformation, right? Remember that purpose that's coming in there is how are people really tra transformed or better off as a result of working with you or hearing about your ideas? How have their behaviors changed? 
things like that. Step number three is putting those pieces together, your purpose and your core and, and what you want to be known for and coming up with your core message. So you'll have a core message and trust me, you will work on it. It'll never be done. It'll always be in draft form, even though you think you're done with it. You'll see that it needs to be tweaked. And thank goodness, digitally, we can do tons of tweaking. Back in the day when things were just going digital, we used to create these slideshows. It's just coming to me right now. Old slide projector shows. I know I'm dating myself, but we used to say that, that old slideshows are, are never done. They're, they're not dead. They're just never completed because we were always switching out slides. Mm -hmm. So today, that, that it's the same thing with, with our words. We're, we'll always be tweaking. And because, as we'll get into in a moment, because you're always evolving and growing, you should be tweaking it because things will change. And so you'll want to refine it to reflect what the truth is today and what you really feel is happening. Maybe it's different from what it was a couple of months ago. And within that core message, you know, you're gonna be putting it on your profile on LinkedIn, on your website, anywhere where you have an online presence, you'll be making sure that that core message comes through, any kind of promotions that you're doing, that message is going to be imbued, again, depending on the business you're in or whether you work for yourself, like, like I do and Roman does, or if you work for, perhaps even for Hebrew Free Loan, and you want to really help enhance the organization's brand, you can do that through your personal brand, picking up on their message and tying your message into theirs. All right, moving on to reputation audit. We talked about that a couple of moments ago, a few moments ago, that remember that there are two types. There's the online uh, and interpersonal, and that interpersonal splits into two. The external, where you're asking people for what they know about you, and then that internal, where you're looking for limiting beliefs and seeing what you can do to make those limiting beliefs smaller. They may never go away, but you can make them small enough so that you can actually, hmm. shall we say, overpower them. Now, moving on to thought leadership and, and being influential, I really want to explain something here. Just like personal branding, some people call writing an article your thought leadership. Oh, you should really put out uh, more thought leadership. So there's a certain truth to that because articles are what I call artifacts, you know, manifestations of thought leadership. But let me give you an example. So I think you'll see it a little differently. We're not using slides right now. So just visualize that we've got a, uh, an arrow here with the, the tail down here and the point of the arrow up here. So here towards the, the bottom part of the arrow, we have lots of experts doing wonderfully great things for clients, you, me included. And we're in a cat, what I call a category of many. There's lots of competition in this space. But let's say you want to break out of that. The next point along this arrow spectrum is going to be to be distinctive. To be distinctive will be that you start publishing more and your name gets out more and people start coming back to you more and asking you for pieces or asking you to speak, asking you to write for them. Perhaps you get some immediate exposure when our way you're getting quoted in, in a publication. Remember a while ago, we used to talk about writing white papers. We can still write white papers, perhaps do some research, a survey. Surveys can be done very simply. They don't have to be scientific. And then from the survey, you, you publish a report and you promote that. That's going to set you apart from from the others. And of course, along with all of that, remember your purpose is always going to set you apart. As we move now towards that, the head of the, the arrow, we're getting closer to thought leadership. Now think of those two words, thought leadership. We're leading with thoughts or leading with ideas. And this is really a category of very few. Hmm. So, you know, on the, uh, on the spectrum here, I hope you, you can see this, the, um, just make sure I've, I've got this held up properly. So this is Carol Dweck's book, uh, Mindset. So Carol really exemplifies, she's written a book, she's a researcher, she's come up with a really novel idea and people throw around mindset perhaps these days or growth mindset without perhaps even knowing that, that Carol Dweck is the, she coined the term, it wasn't a new term, but she coined it in a particular context with the fixed mindset and growth mindset. So you don't have to get to that 
particular point if, if you don't want to write a book. But having a book really is a calling card that will absolutely separate you from, from everybody else. Perhaps you go, yeah, I want a book. I also want a TED Talk. So all of these things, like I said, if, you, if we look at it on a spectrum, you, you decide where you want to be. And your reputation will be at those different points. You'll get known for either being distinctive or at some point perhaps even being known as a, as a thought leader. Now, perhaps you're saying to yourself, really, that's a lot of work, isn't it? And how do I, uh, you know, how do I go about putting out my opinions? You know, I, um, mm, what are people going to say if I put my opinions out there? That just really, uh, you know, fixed mindset, growth mindset. Well, I've got an easy way for you to get into it. And I call it my three C's of LinkedIn thought leadership. Now, again, with thought leadership, we're trying to influence people. And how do we influence them? We influence them with opinions. Now, we don't have to get down and deep and heavy and, you know, changing the world with our opinions. We can just state something that's clearly an opinion. So how does that apply to LinkedIn? What are the three C's? Comment, curate, and create. I'm sure everybody here has at least commented and curated and possibly even created, but let's go through them. Somebody in your network puts up something, they've won an award and you want to go in and comment. And when you go and comment, you're going to see, hey, congratulations, Susie, or well done, Roman. Good for you, yay. And that's it. And you're hearing me today, you can do much better than that. You're going to put your opinion there. You're going to say, congratulations, Roman, on that award, well earned, because the work you did, fill in the blank, has now made such a difference and definitely this was worth you being recognized for that kind of work. That's an opinion. That's just showing the world that you're being thoughtful beyond just saying, oh, congratulations. And showing that you really thought and put meaning behind something as simple, well, for us, but not for the person getting the award, obviously. But it, and it, it's meaningful for the person getting the award. And then people come and read that. You do that frequently enough, people are going to pay attention to you and you're going to see your, the numbers of people looking at your profile. You know, you get those notifications, you'll get more and more of those. Curate is the most fun thing that I can think of to do on LinkedIn. It's really the easiest and you do get a lot of bang for your buck on this. You know, I have a client who curates things on LinkedIn and she gets thousands of views. Now, admittedly, some of them are where she creates and, and she's been named in some articles but even when she posts something that she wants people to pay attention to, she still gets lots of views. So what's curating? Find an article by a major publication or perhaps a thought leader, but something that you think is really important. And most of us, most of us have something like that every day that we'd love to share with someone. Post it up there and don't do what some people I've seen do, which is just post it and not say anything or post it and say, thought you might be interested in this. I know you can do much better than that. Remember, you now know about putting an opinion in there. You're going to write up why you like this article, you know, what its meaning is, and perhaps even point out one or two things about it that, that you want people to pay attention to. Again, one or two mm -hmm. sentences. It's, these are pithy things, but still, multiply this by doing it multiple times, people will see that you are a thinking, thoughtful person who has opinions and they're going to be interested in hearing more about your opinions. And then, as I mentioned a few moments ago, to create is when you've posted something like, or you've been in a video. So once this gets posted, this video gets posted, I'll go onto LinkedIn. I'll do my opinion piece and discuss. Again, it's not about me. You know, oh, I'm so proud I was on this video. No, I'm not going to say anything like that. I'm going to point out to people that what this discussion was about personal branding and reputation. And I'll note at the end that I was featured in this video and provide the link. And then people will go and, and click and, and take a look at it and, and pay attention to it. So that was the three C's of LinkedIn uh, thought, uh, thought leadership. 
again, a night, what I call a nice little starter kit in case monkey on the back is saying, oh, you shouldn't do that. LinkedIn, I think, is a pretty safe, low bar for everybody to get going and get, get used to your own voice, seeing your own voice, putting out opinions, if that's not something you're used to doing. Number six here out of the seven is your content and visibility plan. This is where you're actually, the rubber's going to start hitting the road, or at least you're planning for the rubber to hit the road, where mm -hmm. you'll write articles, give presentations, be a guest on podcasts, get quoted in the media, find some reporters online who, are, who write about your field, and you're, you know that you gravitate to those articles, start reading them and saying, hmm, that could be my voice right there, I could be quoted right there, and start to develop a relationship with that particular reporter. Like I mentioned, you could write a white paper or do some research and all the other pieces we've talked about. So plan to do that. Ideally, you put it on a calendar, but if you don't, at least have a, have a laundry list of things you would like to accomplish, let's say, in the next three months. And a laundry list might be one item a month, one simple thing a month. Maybe do one LinkedIn curation every couple of weeks, that, that kind of thing that you plan for. And step number seven is carry out the plan. So you've planned for it, now you have to carry it out. So if you've got in mind all of those six items and you don't actually carry it out, it's a missed opportunity for you because that is how you're going to build your personal brand. That's how people are going to notice you and that's how you're going to build your reputation and shape your reputation. And this so is remember, all very even, yeah, even just small, the smallest of steps, just at least take a, a step and then another step. Now, this is all very helpful because uh, just going into this talk, I know how important the topic is and I know how important it is for us to show up in the best way, but also being genuine and being transparent and being true to actually who we are instead of creating this false identity for ourselves, but showing up exactly who we are and how we are, but it is intimidating. And there's so many things that we can do and there's so many things we should do and then some things that we probably should not. And so it's really helpful to get that checklist and the seven steps that you talked about, Roberta. So thank you for that. And I hope that you will provide us with some links if you have these checklists online that we could then uh, provide for our viewers that are going to be watching the replay so that they can reference all of these steps and go back because, you know, it's like watching a movie. Every time you see it more than once, you tend to see things that you didn't see the first time around. So um, hopefully you'll be able to provide those for all of our viewers watching the replay. And uh, just with a couple of minutes remaining, um, I know that one of the articles that you wrote, um, and it comes with its own worksheet, is around the curiosity quotient. And so if you could just condense that in about a minute or two, tell us about curiosity and how curiosity, curiosity relates to our personal and professional brands. When we were kids, when we were chill, little children, we, everything we did was about, we were curious about everything. As we grew up, that curiosity got knocked out of us. We went to school, we were told, how, how to think. And as adults, we lost that ability to be curious. Mm. Now, why is curiosity so important and why should we be curious? Because we need to absorb things that are around us, learn things. And I think probably the most important is to be able to connect the dots because that way we can create, provide so much more value to clients and to the other people who are in our lives. So here's a very quick rundown on, on how to do it. First of all, know your industry, the history of your industry, what's current and possible future trends. You may be one of those trendsetters yourself. Know your client's industry. Now you don't have to know it as, as well as they do. Obviously you don't have to become an expert, but know it enough so that when you see something, you can pass it along to your client. And who knows, you may be introducing them to something new that they hadn't realized. Curiosity is critical to expanding your thought leadership footprint and your thought leadership. The more curious you are, the more you're going to enjoy life, enjoy what you do, and also, like I said, be so much more valuable uh, to others. Now, some people say, oh my God, this is just so hard. Being curious is just hard. And I've had more than one person say that to me. So 
what I will say back to you, the easiest thing I know to do, go to a favorite piece of music that you have that you really know and like, it can be any genre, listen to it once, that's okay, a few minutes. Go back again and the second time, focus on one instrument. And that's all you're going to do is focus on one instrument for two, three, four minutes. When you come away from that, your brain is going to be different because what you've done now is you've started to exercise a muscle that was essentially just lying dormant. It had gone flabby. And it's going to enable you to start seeing things instead of just being a blur, which our brain is adapted to do so that we don't take too much stuff in. It's going to allow you to start discerning things again and to be able to pull out pieces of, of, of life that are interesting and that could be very helpful for you, for your thought leadership or whatever place you are on that spectrum and also especially for your clients and providing really deep value for clients rediscovering childhood and building our curiosity is going to help our branding yes <laughs> yes um so roberta this has been a very interesting i know you've shared a lot of good things and i i'm sure you'll include those in the links that we'll provide in the show notes but is there anything else any parting thoughts that you'd like to share with our viewers yes thank you for asking i've got three parting thoughts so mm -hmm. if you forget everything this is what i want you to remember be crystal clear about your purpose and how you're making transformations how you're making people better off with the work with you do and your ideas because purpose is the foundation, your purpose, mm. that purpose is the foundation of your personal brand and what you want to be known for. The next is mindset. Just remember, you are that messenger who unleashes ideas. It's not about you. Anytime you feel it's about you, it isn't, I promise you. Come back and listen to this. It's your responsibility to get those ideas out so that you can help others, so that they can learn from you and change the way they think and behave. And then finally, the more you do this, the more you think about it and take action, the more confident and comfortable you'll feel with it. And the clarity you gain is just going to be, you know, off the top here. It'll be so rewarding to you. And in no time, you're gonna be rocking your re reputation and definitely be sought after as an authority in your field. And of course, that's for whatever reputation you want to have for yourself. And I, I appreciate you mentioning those, and it's a great way to wrap up our talk. But I must say that just having gone through this with you, it's uh, again, it's intimidating to think about, especially in the professional realm, about all the things that we know we should be doing that we probably don't have time to do, or we don't know how to do in effort to better position ourselves as those thought leaders. But I do appreciate that you make it sound really simple. Be who you are, say what you think, and do as you said. Those are pretty straightforward. Well, well, it, it's really take us take it step by step. Mm -hmm. And it, it does sound simple, or maybe it doesn't sound simple. And I'm not under any illusion because I, I like everybody else, have those limiting beliefs. And I've long ago discovered that that I have no time to do it. Um, it's a lie. It's a you know, we put we set our priorities. So if we set just mm. one little piece, one action step a day or every other day and put that on our to-do list, it becomes a priority. So now we say, wow, I found time to do it. Of course, we know it's not the time. It's 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 because the other stuff isn't is less risky. This stuff is it's a little also risky. being intentional and, and, intentional. and approaching this intentionally as opposed to as a when we have time it is a nice to yeah. do but it really is a must do because whether we're trying to or not our reputation and our brand is being built with or without us that's right. at least that's one of the things that i'm taking away from our conversation so that, for all right. of you watching live thank you for watching us live for all of you who will be watching a replay i hope you find as much value from this as i have i want to thank again roberta for being and sh here and sharing your expertise with us in building and rocking our personal brands. Thanks to Hebrew Free Loan and the Business Circle for uh, making this program available. And uh, look forward to having these conversations again in the near future with you, Roberta. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. And thank you, everybody out there. Thanks. Be well. Take care. <laughs>